High dividend income ETFs have become extremely popular over the past two to three years and are a primary focus for income investors and retirees. However, it is very important to try and identify dividend traps. More and more ETFs are coming out with new and more creative ways to try and achieve extremely high yields with the use of options, most notably the use of a covered call strategy that sells call options in order to collect premium income, which is then distributed to investors as a dividend yield. And these ETFs have very attractive yields, which can fool a lot of investors. But the one thing you have to remember is that these strategies are only beneficial on a diverse set of stocks or an index like the S&P 500, or the Nasdaq 100. And this is strictly because if you use a strategy on a single stock, then you become susceptible to a number of different risks solely surrounding the company, which can quickly deplete your portfolio and destroy the overall performance of the fund. Now, many of you may already know where I'm going with this, but this brings me to TSLY, which is the Yield Max Tesla Option Income Strategy ETF. This is a high dividend income ETF that uses a synthetic covered call strategy on Tesla stock. And for those of you who don't know what a synthetic covered call is, I do have a video that goes to it in detail and you can check it out right here. But essentially, the fund first creates a synthetic long position by buying a call option and selling a put option, typically at the money. This replicates the price movement of an underlying stock. Then subsequently sells a call option typically out of the money to collect premium income. Now this ETF has plummeted so much that its dividend yield is sitting at a staggering 100%. It's almost as if every time I take a look at this ETF, the dividend yield just keeps getting higher. For those of you who don't know, Tesla has recently announced their fourth quarter earnings and the results were very disappointing. On Thursday, Tesla plummeted 12%, starting the year off by falling almost 30%. And the same goes for TSLY. This ETF has plummeted just about the same amount. And I made several videos last week outlining the 2024 earnings outlook for Tesla and why many analysts have been downgrading their price targets for 2024 specifically. Now, if you haven't seen those videos yet, I highly suggest that you do because I go through everything in detail. TSLY gained a lot of popularity over the past year, and now I've actually gotten quite a few questions from you guys asking what you should do if your money is stuck in this ETF and what would be the best way to recover. Dollar cost averaging isn't the best thing to do in this situation. So this is where things get really interesting. To begin, I have put out several warnings about this ETF and why it could be a very dangerous avenue for individuals who seek high income. And going back to why high income investments are best on a diverse set of stocks, individual companies are always more susceptible to a different set of risks compared to an index. One of the biggest ones is earnings and earnings outlook, as we can clearly see. But on top of that, many times a certain piece of news or specific events like rating downgrades from analysts, which are unaccounted for, can have a significant impact on the price performance of a stock. And that is why high income strategy ETFs should only be used on a wide variety of assets. So your downside risk is already being hedged thanks to diversification. So the question is, what should you do if your money is stuck in a fund like this? And this is where I think that realizing the losses and taking advantage of tax loss harvesting is very important. But there's also a very important detail regarding long-term capital gains and losses and short-term capital gains and losses that you need to look out for in order to take full advantage of this. So pay attention. Before we dive into that, I just want to say that this is my personal opinion and absolutely not financial advice. I highly suggest that you do your own research and speak to a licensed financial advisor. And by the way, I wanted to quickly remind you guys that Seeking Alpha is currently offering $50 off their premium plan so go ahead and grab that deal before it's gone you can find the link in the description down below now look tesla is not shy of volatility in fact it is the most volatile stock within the magnificent seven if you could even include it in that category at this point we've seen the stock plummet 36 percent in one month and then rally 40 percent in the following month and there are countless examples of this but if you're holding your funds in tsly the covered call strategy exposes you to 100 percent of the downside risk but limits your upside potential thanks to the covered calls so if you are still bullish and hoping to benefit from a recovery rally from tesla well, you will only be exposed to a fraction of that gain, not all of it. So the smartest thing to do, in my opinion, is not to dollar cost average like we're all accustomed to, but to instead realize the losses and then buy Tesla stock immediately afterwards, taking advantage of the situation by maintaining exposure and writing off your losses. Like I said, a covered call ETF is not going to allow you to recover your funds. If Tesla rallies 40% next month, you would only be exposed to a fraction of it. And that is because a covered call puts a limit on the upside potential. And with this ETF, it's usually capped at 15%. So at this point, buying Tesla stock gives you a higher probability to recover your funds quicker. 
And on top of that, you can use this realized loss for tax loss harvesting in order to offset any capital gains that you've realized from other investments and lower your tax obligations for the year. And in the event where your losses have exceeded the gains, you can carry over the losses to offset any gains for the following year. Forget about dollar cost averaging here and use what you have left to invest in the stock itself. Now, there's two things we have to talk about. Number one is how does tax loss harvesting work? And number two, what if Tesla just continues to drop in value? Like I said, Tesla is subject to a lot of volatility. If Tesla does keep falling, TSLY is going to keep falling as well, and the dividend yield is not going to help you. In fact, the net asset value of the fund is going to deplete at a much quicker rate. It's also very important to remember that, yes, Tesla's outlook for 2024 is disappointing, but many hedge funds and analysts are focusing on 2025, 2026, and onwards. And like I said in my previous videos, I have gone over why the company is projected to have substantial earnings per share growth come 2025. So don't lose hope, trust your research. Now let's circle back to tax loss harvesting and how you can use it. And we'll run through a few examples so that you can get a thorough understanding. The concept of tax loss harvesting is used to offset taxes as much as possible by realizing capital losses. But the key detail here is that there's two types of capital losses. There's short term and then there's long term. For this situation, we'll focus on short-term capital losses. Short-term capital losses can be used to offset both short-term and long-term capital gains, but it must be used to offset short-term first. And only if there is an excess of short-term losses, then it can be used to offset long-term capital gains. But the least effective use of harvested short-term losses would be to apply them to long-term capital gains. And it all comes back to taxes. Short-term gains are taxed at your regular income tax rate. So whatever your taxable income is for the year, as a single filer, depending on what tax bracket you fall under, all short-term gains are taxed at the same rate as your income tax. So trying to minimize this as much as possible is the key. But long-term capital gains have a maximum taxation of 20%. And the best part is the wide range of income that will still allow you to take advantage of lower taxation. So if your income as a single filer is between $47,000 and $518,000, which is a huge range, then your tax rate is only 15%, and then 0% on anything below $47,000. Given that TSLY is a very new fund and has only been around for a little over a year, I assume that many investors have not held this fund for more than a year, so when realizing the losses, for most of you, it will be considered as short-term capital losses. And because short-term capital gains are taxed much higher, you want to deduct from that as much as possible. The goal is to strategically match the holding period of your losses with the holding period of your gains to maximize tax efficiency. This can be especially beneficial for traders or individuals that use the wheel strategy or a covered call strategy of their own, because all of that income is considered short-term capital gains if the options were held for less than a year. So you can offset all of that income. And remember, the best part is that you are still exposed to the underlying stock in case of a recovery. So let's run through an example. Let's say that in your portfolio, you have three different investments. Fund A has an unrealized gain of $250,000 and it is held for 450 days. Fund B has an unrealized loss of $130,000 and it is held for 635 days. And Fund C has an unrealized loss of $100,000 held for 125 days. Let's say in another holding you have Fund E where you realize the gain of $200,000 held for 380 days and Fund F has realized a gain of $150,000 held for 150 days. And let's say that as a single tax filer, you are in the top marginal income tax rate of 37%. So without tax loss harvesting, you would owe $95,500 in taxes from your realized gains where the 200,000 is taxed at 20% long-term capital gains and the $150,000 is taxed at 37%. But by using tax loss harvesting, you can lower your tax liability to $32,500. Remember, you're deducting long-term realized losses from long-term capital gains and short-term realized losses from short-term capital gains. Now, there's a few very important details you have to remember. For one, once you realize the losses, it's important to purchase investments that give you relatively the same exposure as before. Essentially buying the dip. Don't just sell and forget about it. So like selling TSLY and buying Tesla. Also, you can't buy the exact same security within 30 days. This is called the wash sale rule. And because then tax loss harvesting would not apply. And you cannot buy very similar investments as well. So for example, if you decide to sell QQQ for a loss, then you can't purchase QQQ again for the next 30 days. 
but you also cannot purchase QQQM because these two are practically the same. They just have different expense ratios and different prices. Now, could you sell SPY and purchase VOO? I'm not too sure because these ETFs are managed by separate companies along with different expense ratios, but I just don't know. And the second is that tax loss harvesting does not matter for tax deferred accounts like IRAs and 401k. And that is simply because you cannot deduct losses generated in a tax deferred account. So in the case of TSLY and Tesla, selling and then buying the original stock will allow you to benefit from any significant rallies, but all of this tax loss harvesting stuff won't matter. And lastly, if your realized losses exceed both short-term and long-term capital gains, then you can only deduct a maximum of $3,000 from your taxable income for a given year, and any more than that can be carried over to offset future taxes. So overall, it's just very important to find investments that will not get you stuck in a situation like this in the first place, and that is the main focus of this channel. We focus on maximizing dividend income and maximizing growth, along with managing downside risk. But if you do find yourself in a situation where you have a significant realized loss, then use tax loss harvesting to your advantage to try and offset capital gains tax as much as possible. And try to find investments to replace your sold securities that have the same overall exposure. And for the case of Tesla and TSLY, I don't think that the wash rule applies because they are two totally different investments. And that is all for this one. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!